If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to answer this question on your own first before listening on. We have a bit of a unique situation in this problem. We have a very large non-conducting plate. And one of the examples in the chapter of your physics book explains how to determine the electric field for a non-conducting infinite plane sheet of charge. And that's exactly what we have in this problem. Let's take a look at the equation that was derived using Gauss's law for that scenario. So here is the magnitude of that electric field and we can see that it's equal to the magnitude of this quantity right here, which is the uniform charge per unit area on the sheet. And that quantity was actually symbolized in this question and mentioned right here with this Greek letter sigma. They called it the charge per unit area. So that's that quantity in the numerator and then we divide by two times a constant. Now there are a couple of other facts that we have to understand for this question. So the electric field is going to be directed away from the sheet if there is a positive charge density the electric field, on the other hand, will be directed towards the sheet if there is a negative charge density. So what we have done next is we've drawn a basic picture that represents the information described in the question. We have our first non-conducting plate with a charge per unit area of sigma located in the xy plane, and then we have our second non-conducting plate with a charge per unit area of negative two sigma, and that is located at z equals two centimeters. So we've just moved that plate a little bit to the right of the first plate. And in part A, we are asked to determine the electric field using this equation again for three different distances. Now for the first distance, it says z is less than zero. So in our picture, that would be in this region over here. We can pick any arbitrary point that lies on the far left of our diagram and what we'll do is just follow the rules that we set out before. Again, if the charge density is positive, then the field has to be directed away from the sheet. So at this point, as a result of this sheet right here, we would have an electric field that's pointing in this direction. And we could label that E. And that's coming from this plate right here. And then we have the electric field produced by the negatively charged plate. And if we follow the rules, we should be pointing the electric field towards that sheet. And that's going to be the electric field produced by the negative two sigma. Now, the blue electric field is pointing to the right and the red one is pointing to the left. So this one's going to remain a positive electric field vector, whereas the other one is negative. And so we're going to add them together to get the total electric field which we can perhaps just call E total. Now for the red colored electric field, again, it's negative, and then the magnitude has to follow this equation. So it's going to be the charge per unit area of sigma over the constant two epsilon. And then we're going to add the positive electric field produced by the negatively charged plate. And notice the charge per unit area is negative two sigma. Now that's gonna be in absolute values. And that's again over the constant two epsilon. So the absolute value is actually going to render that a positive value. And then over here, the absolute value of this charge per unit area remains positive. So if we combine these like terms, we essentially have two sigma minus sigma. That's going to give a total electric field of just sigma over that constant two epsilon. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. Part B asks us to examine the electric field between zero and two centimeters. So that's gonna lie between the plates. Again, we're gonna be following these rules. So we're going to have an electric field produced by the positive plate that points away from it. That would be towards the right. And then we have an electric field that points towards the negative plate. And that's also going to be pointing to the right. So these are both positive vectors, and we can label them with their respective symbols. And we're gonna add them together. So we can come over here again and do the total electric field. The first one 
the red electric field is going to be the magnitude of its charge per unit area, so the absolute value of sigma over the constant 2 epsilon. Notice it's a positive vector, so we make sure to leave that electric field as a positive value. The other electric field is also positive because it's pointing to the right, so we're going to add the magnitude of that charge per unit area over that same constant. Again, the absolute values are going to take away the negative sign on sigma here, and then this sigma remains positive. We've got a common denominator. We can just add them together. We're going to end up with 3 sigma over 2 times that constant. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Finally, to part C, where the distance is greater than 2 centimeters, so that's going to lie on the very far right of our diagram. The first electric field has to point away from the positive plate, and then the other electric field points towards the negative plate. We'll come over here and do the total electric field one more time, and that will be the electric field produced by the positive plate, which is sigma over 2 times that constant. Now, this electric field is pointing to the left, and so that has to be assigned a negative sign. And then we have the absolute value of its charge per unit area divided by the constant. We can take off the negative because of that absolute value. And then when we simplify this, we can see that this total electric field will be negative 1 sigma over 2 times the constant. And the fact that it's negative means that that electric field is overall pointing to the left. So as far as the directions were concerned, we can see that there was an electric field that was pointing to the left in this region. Between the plates, the total electric field was pointing to the right. And then on the far left side, the total electric field also was pointing to the right. So those would be the final directions.